All right, everybody. Welcome to the Monday live stream. Thanks for showing up. I appreciate it. Uh, we got a lot of things to go over. So again, let's just jump right in. So today, another great day. Green day. Everybody talks about how fantastic it is, and it is. We've been we've been uh, been crushed in these these uh, this bear market for quite some time. And of course, we've been we've had quite a rally, and nothing has felt so sweeter in the last seven days. It seems like. I mean, look at this Bitcoin, which is one of the slowest moving ones, went from thirty seven thousand all the way up to forty two thousand in a week. That's amazing. And I've always said, I think somebody knows something. Somebody knows something about the ETF. Somebody knows something about the macro. Somebody knows something about what's going on in the Fed, because that is a heck of a response for one of the largest assets and the most uh, best performing assets out there. So we have that. And before we get into the, to the main story, where we talk about altcoin or Bitcoin and altcoin rotations. I just want to just give uh, credit where credit's due. El Salvador. They just net a $4 million Bitcoin profit after holding a loss for two years. Bukele here, the president of El Salvador, I mean, he got uh, ripped by everybody, uh, except for, of course, Bitcoiners. And he came out and said, oh, sorry, Bank of England, I told you so. And for context, what he was talking about is that the Bank of England actually put a report and they said they were worried about El Salvador's adoption of Bitcoin. They wanted to give them loans. They wanted to put them in debt. And of course, the president said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to go for Bitcoin. <laughs> it worked out pretty great. And on top of that, I think everybody's been talking about this. Michael Saylor, he's now, uh, again, also somebody who has been uh, laughed at by traditional finance. And now he is 1.5. I think I saw another report where it's like 1.7 or 1.8 now, billion dollars in profit. So we'll just go with 1.5. Not bad for a couple years investment. That's micro strategy uh, moving forward. And again, uh, when people take a look at this and they say, oh, that, that'll never work out. And it worked out pretty well for him. And I think it's the same thing for people that are actually in our space, especially you who have been investing for the last two, three, five, ten 10 years for the same thing has been said uh, as well. And then also, I just want to make mention of uh, one thing. There's always going to be people who are going to be negative against your investments. It's just true. And of course, it's, it's a little bit uh, telling when you got one of the greatest investors out there, Warren Buffett like the guy. He's got great advice or great books, a lot of information. And he's the one that said, hey, I wouldn't buy all the Bitcoin in the world for 25 bucks. It has no value, which funny enough, uh, Bitcoin has more value than the entire amount of Berkshire Hathaway. And it's in the number 10 spot. And I, wa I want you to, to notice one thing. And that's gold up here at the very number one spot at $14.12 trillion. That's a lot. That's a lot. And I think that at some point, Bitcoin's going to eat into that. And congratulations to all the gold holders. I am one of those. I own gold and silver. And we reach an all-time high. But uh, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And of course, we had a nice little pump today. But then, of course, it goes back down. Some people are calling gold an S-coin. But you don't understand. This is like a very, very long, long time coming. And Peter Schiff, I'm sure he's happy having to wait a decade to hit this again. So congratulations to all you, all you gold holders. But I still do think that Bitcoin's going to eat into that in some way, shape, or form. So let's talk about this altcoin rotation or rotation into assets. And this was actually from Coindesk. Institutional traders are split between Bitcoin and Ethereum. And this is a re research case by Bybit. I'm not going to go over the whole thing. I'm just going to show you this nice little graph right here where institutional investors, and we can hear it, we can see it, we can feel it, we know that they want uh, Bitcoin. And then on the second side, they may say a little bit of Ethereum and 5% are altcoins. Now, there has been a, um, a massive uh, influx in investing, especially into Solana. There is a, uh, a lot of institutional investment into Solana, but I found it interesting that it's 5% of altcoins. And I think that's, that's where I think that we are the same, traditional finance and of course, crypto investors, because we get into these, these safe spots whether that be, of course, the S&P 500 or indexes or commodities, and you put yourself into gold and silver only, or like with crypto and digital assets, we put ourselves into Bitcoin first, and then we kind of flow into altcoins. And I'll tell you, and I'll get to that in a second. But it is amazing to me that traditional finance says, stood up and take notice. And I think it's it's also telling because one of the largest asset managers on the planet, BlackRock, with almost 10 trillion assets under management, it wants to start a Bitcoin ETF. This is Mohammed uh, El Arian, president of Queens College, Cambridge. You'll know him because he's always on CNBC. And he sent out a tweet today. And he's not a big Bitcoin guy. He said, look, the prices of Bitcoin, oil, and gold are attracting attention this morning. Over 41,000 will hit 42K. 
It's better. It's benefiting from a general risk on environment and a weak dollar. Why is there a risk on environment? It's because of the speech made by Jerome Powell, where he said there, you know, he didn't allude to the fact, but people are assuming that he's going to cut rates. And when they cut rates, that gives us a little bit more of an inroad into those risky assets. BlackRock, as a matter of fact, put out a report and said that on the year that the Fed usually cuts rates, if you're in a money market account, the yield usually is 4.5% or lower. So you have to rotate your assets in a something that will give you a better yield because it only keeps slipping 4.5, 4, 3.5, maybe into riskier assets. And he says here that it's a little bit more risky right now as people are rotating out. Oil is lower, brushing aside the initial reaction to last week's news on production cuts. And he says, it's a general risk on environment and a weak dollar. I thought to myself, like, is, the, is the dollar really that weak? We take a look at the Dixie here, which is against a, a basket of uh, five or so currencies. Let me just pop this out to like three year plot. We can see that, yeah, I didn't realize it was actually gone down this much. We saw that uh, the, the strength of the dollar in October 9th, 2022 was at its a peak, 113.31, 113.31. And I thought, well, it's, you know, I just thought it would, uh, you know, ebb and flow, but we can see now that actually it hit, it was about below 100 on July, and now we've come up to 106, and now we're coming back down to 103. So quite a bit of difference, and he's right. And then actually, I want you to notice there's two interviews we're gonna, we're gonna take a look at. It's only this one with Al Arian, and then we've also got one from, this is uh, over on CNBC, uh, Joe Mazzola, who's the director of Charles Schwab, where we get into the rotation of assets. But I just thought it was very telling that uh, CNBC, I mean, they're here to talk to Mohammed about the Fed target rates of inflation and, and uh, what's happening with, with the Fed itself and when they're going to cut. And over here with Joe Mazzola for the Charles Schwab Director of Trading, uh, they talk about rotating into different sectors. And just listen to this as they kind of just kind of go off the rails and sort of talk about more about crypto. So let me have you actually hear this the right way. Let me pull this up, share my screen the right way so you can actually hear it. And I got to tell you, listen to this and don't and tell me if we're not early. Take a listen. Ba, 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 ba. Chief Economic Advisor at Allianz and President of Queens College at Cambridge University. I'm just happy you finally got friendlier towards Bitcoin. Um, at, at, finally did that, uh, <laughs> Muhammad, right? And, and you, you down in the mid 20s, I think you said it was going to get a catch a bit at that point, I think. Yeah, but what a bid. Yeah, I mean, it's right. Hey, hey, Mohammed. So we just heard that it, the Atlanta Fed's at like one percent or something. So that five point two percent print—that's um, like ancient history, I guess, already. Or should we view it that way? No, I wouldn't call it ancient history. It's real. It has benefited our economy, but it was also associated with a rundown of savings. That's why when you extract. Okay. So he's going to talk about rundown of savings. He's going to talk about the massive amount of debt that we have in credit cards. Do you know that in America, we have over $1.3 trillion in debt right now? And the average credit card in America, $6,000 on credit. So it's something to take, to take into account when we're talking about all these things. But I got to tell you, it was interesting how like they're here to talk about one thing and they're like, hey, how about that Bitcoin? It's, this, it's the thing that really drives the narrative. And the next one we're going to take a look at is uh, the Charles Schwab. A uh, gentleman who's uh, responsible for investing and talking about selling into strength and rotating into different sectors. So, again, it's about a minute or so. Just take a listen to this. And, and again, he's here to talk about something different. They're like, and they kind of just pull him into crypto. Who's out that you're joining us is Joe Amazola. He's uh, Charles Schwab's director of trading and education. And, you know, the last couple of weeks of, of the year are always super, super active. And then you add in what we're seeing in crypto right now. And I, I'm curious uh, what, what kind of numbers you're seeing. Hey, good morning. So I think the story of the IMX, the Investor Movement Index, which we track on a monthly basis, is really one of kind of selling, uh, selling into strength and rotating into different sectors. And that's what we saw in November. We saw our clients kind of move out of some of the mega caps and take advantage of some of maybe that Mega movement caps. underneath the surface that you're seeing overall in the markets. We saw selling in uh, communication services, we saw selling in IT, and a lot of buying in healthcare, energy, and then uh, consumer staples. So that rotation that's kind of underlying the surface right now, same thing that we're seeing here at uh, TD and Schwab. What do you see about the crypto piece of this? So how, how do you sort of uh, make sense of that? Is that 
you think totally dependent on what the Fed is doing, or at least the perception of what the Fed's going to do next year? Well, you know, I still look at crypto as a trade, so I think that uh, it's a momentum trade. And, and it, w what we tend to see is we don't see a lot of buyers of crypto at the bottom. We see a lot of buyers of crypto at the top. So when you start to see things kind of pushing into next levels, that's where that uh, kind of the retail interest really starts to pick up a bit. Could it be a story in terms of what the Fed's doing? That's a bit hard to tell. But when you look at kind of the backdrop of what we've seen in the market as a whole, I mean, think about this. We, we saw a 50 basis point drop in the 10-year yield just uh, in the last month alone. So there's a lot, of, uh, a, a lot of buying and a lot of excitement in maybe some of these names that had underperformed. And I think that that's kind of what you're seeing, some of the interest rate, interest rate sensitive names. You know, the biggest name uh, in terms of the buying from our clients uh, believe it or not, was uh, was Realty Income, uh, letter O. And so th some of those stocks and, 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 you know, crypto to a certain extent, some of those interest rate sensitive names have really taken off in the last month. And a lot of that just has to do with the, the changing macro environment. I mean, it looks like, you know, based upon what uh, the CME FedWatch tool is telling us, that they're pulling forward rate right. cuts into potentially March and even potentially uh, June with around an 85 percent chance. See, so I think that. Yeah. So, I mean, it went a little bit long. Sorry about that. But you, you, you get what he's talking about here. He's saying, like, look, there's a rotation of capital and we go into these huge mega caps. This is a traditional finance. And then we get into some smaller types of things. He talked about uh, technology and education, these different things he said. But it's the same thing here with with uh, digital assets and crypto. And we've talked about this before, is that everything kind of pretty much starts with Bitcoin. That's why you have a Bitcoin dominance. And then people sort of get out of Bitcoin. They take those profits because it's the safest thing. They roll them into the altcoins. They ride those altcoins up. Then they sell them and they get back into Bitcoin and Bitcoin dominance goes up again. And then if we take a look at it, it's a very simple thing. And if you ever want to if you want to listen to somebody talking about Bitcoin dominance, I know a guy. His name's Ben Cowan. And uh, I think the next video he's going to do is going to be at least two hours. And we can just see that, of course, you know, the price action is doing pretty well. But if we take a look at the Bitcoin dominance itself, just going back to May 2022, in the red <clears throat> is Bitcoin dominance. And you can just see that, like, let's just, let's just go for recent. So Bitcoin dominance, 45, it, it, it drops down a little bit. People get into alts a little bit. And then it, it rides back up as we sell the alts and we take those profits. Then we go back down and we go back down because people get into alts and they sell them off. And then just recently, October, and of course, October 2023, everything is kind of, especially like Web3 gaming has, has gone out just like gangbusters. I just interviewed Kagi. Uh, he's uh, uh, big into uh, uh, the Web3 blockchain gaming. He's got a YouTube channel, Twitter, great guy. And we talked about, it. he gave me his, his, uh, his price, but not a price predictions, but his, uh, the projects that he sees doing very well and why they're gonna do well. And I gotta tell you, it's the same narrative I keep hearing Altcoins, altcoins, getting into those. And I'm going to release that video tomorrow. But very telling about where things are going. But as you can see, Bitcoin dominance, 53%. Then people got into alts yet again. It goes, it flows out of Bitcoin. And now look what we're doing here. And we're going up into almost 53% for Bitcoin dominance. So can it hit 60%? Yeah, maybe. I don't really know. But uh, I can just tell you that uh, I think as we get into more of this bull run, you're going to see more of this. You're going to see... Especially, I think Bitcoin take a little bit of a flux, especially with the ETF coming out. I also think stacks will be pretty well because they're layer two. And I think there's a lot of gains to be had, but then they'll go into alts. People will take the alts and move up. And that's why I think it's important that everybody just pay attention to what's happening in the just Bitcoin and the altcoin market because there are massive gains out there. And the other thing I like to look at real quick is taking a look at in the money. This is a great website, Into the Block. And in the Block, we'll show you what's who's in and out of the money. And really what it means is how long are people going to hold on and until they actually want to sell or have to sell. Some of these, these plays, like look at this, Bitcoin right now at roughly 40, 48,000. Is that what it is? Let me see. What are we at? I can't be right. 40, excuse me, 41,868. Uh, if we take a look at that, how many people are in the money now? You know, 87% of people are in the money. Why? Well, that probably doesn't make any sense because people bought at 67, 69,000. How is that possible? It's because the same people that bought the top also listened and said, you know what? I Maybe I'll dollar cost average and I'll buy it at the bottom or towards the middle or towards whatever. 
And uh, they've lowered their cost basis enough to now almost 90% of people are in profit. That's why I like to take a look at this, at this page because when there's more people in profit, there's more people that want to like sell and get rid of stuff. So you can see that, like I say, either Cardano, not too great. Out, 55% of people are out of profit. Uh, Dogecoin, look at this, almost 72%. I'm actually dollar cost averaging Dogecoin right now. I'm dollar cost averaging Chainlink. And actually I did a video yesterday out of all the different cryptos that I own, going from there. Tuncoin, amazing, 66%. Polygon, one of my other bigger holds. Even, I don't think I'm actually in profit on this one. No, no, probably not. Because I bought it at uh, some pretty high prices. It just happens. Dai, Shiba Inu is out of profit. Bitcoin Cash, doing pretty good. OKB, I don't really like uh, um, the exchange tokens after I got burned so hard on the other ones. Immutable X, Rap Bitcoin. Anyhow, you can find us over there. And what the heck? FTX token. Let's get into that. People are in profit at FTX token. Let's see why. So here's the thing. We just talked about the bullish case and we sound some pretty good things and looks pretty positive, right? This is happening. Let's take a flip side to that. And some of these things, I got to tell you, I think people are setting themselves up for failure. Now, I can't tell you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor, not your dad, but this is kind of ridiculous. And if you're doing this, hey, good, best of luck to you. Tokens linked to defunct Terra shoot 70% on Bitcoin linking burn program. So Terra 2.0 and Terra Classic gain more than 10,000. Year-to-date gains more than 10,000%. Oh, that's really true. Three tokens, Luna Classic, Terra 2.0, and Terra USD Classic have jumped as much as 70% in 24 hours. So if you think you're like a great trader, there's always someone doing better. And I don't know if they're manipulating it, but it doesn't make any sense to me. Here's the Terra Luna Classic. And we take a look over the last 24 hours, tw almost 30%. You know that in 30 days, it's up 265%. Terra Luna Classic. Am I telling you to buy Terra Luna Classic? No. I don't see the point of it. I, I won't buy it probably because, you know, everybody that got burned. But, hey, everybody's out there is different. Here's Terra, Terra 2.0. This is uh, the new Terra 2.0 chain. Check this out. In 30 days, it's up 133%. And then here's some other nonsense. FTX token or FTT. Uh, over 30 days, it's up 300%. So if you thought your token's doing great or your crypto or even Bitcoin, it's getting beat by a token that is by a defunct exchange that is essentially in bankruptcy and the founder is headed to jail and is on suicide watch right now. Hope it works out for you, Sam. So with this one, why is this happening? Well, it's because the guy that's supposed to protect us harder, Gary Gensler, said he would give the green light, or potentially, to starting up FTX again. Unbelievable. And this, I think, is a bad play. But again, you can do whatever it is you want to do. So that is it for today. So look, <laughs> some days I don't know why people do the things they do, but I could be, I could be looking at this all wrong. And that's why, let's well, stick around and you talk about it. So look, if you got to take off, take off. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.